Hello coaches, welcome back to another MSC Tactical Breakdown. 3v3 at youth soccer, there's a number of benefits of playing it. More touches on the ball, increased decision making, more involvement for all three players, more triangles, more engagement, more enjoyment. One of the biggest advocates of 3v3 at youth level has been Peter Prickett. He's written a number of books on playing philosophy, game models around 3v3, how to incorporate it, how to maximize the time. His recent book, 3v3 Inspired by Legends, is something that I've just finished reading. There's a link below. I highly recommend you getting a copy of it. But before you do order a copy, I'm going to explain in this interview exactly why you should. I read the book. I loved it. I love retro football. I love the legends aspect. But the idea of building exercises that are inspired by the greats, current and past, and then looking at how you can generate and create exercises around those players is absolutely brilliant. I loved it. There's 150 training games. We're going to take a look at four of them today. And I've done an interview with Peter and I wanted to get his thoughts on four different games, what he's trying to bring out, getting the way behind the design of it as well. And we'll talk a little bit about the legends. So this is the design part of the interview we did. If you want the full philosophy interview, a background interview, Get it on the link below. It's on the Modern Soccer Coach podcast. Please give this a like and a subscribe below as we continue to grow the channel. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please, it takes two seconds, just click subscribe on the link below. And while you're there, press like as well to help the channel grow and reach as many coaches as possible. The first question I wanted to ask Peter was the why behind the book. There's a quick clip that I wanted to share with you about using names of games for players and coaches to remember it and also to think about why we do what we do. Here was Peter's answer. I came across a PDF written by Pepe and Linders when he was was youth coach in, in, at Feyenoord, I think he was at, or was at PSV, whichever of them it was. Um, and he talked about playing small-sided games and they named them. So they'd named them the Beckham game. They'd named them to try and say, if a, or the Zidane game was another one. If we're playing the Beckham game, we're putting in crosses. If we're playing the Zidane game, we're doing lots of turns. And that sort of was the extra prompt to go, okay, let's, let's explore this idea a bit further and see where it comes out. All right, so let's take a look at some of the exercises in the book and we'll go through them. The first one is from Ronald Koeman and a game inspired by Ronald Koeman. For every legend, Peter describes why he's chosen that player, what characteristics of the player had, and of course the career they had, a little overview as well that I enjoyed. Ronald Koeman, for any of you that remember Ronald Koeman as a player, passing ability, wow, but also the range at which he had with his passing that he could switch the play and find players in higher spaces to open up the game. So this exercise here is designed for that. One team attacks the big goal, the blue team below, the red team are defending, the yellow team are playing for the blue team. They're passing it across from each other and then looking to play the blue team and turning it into a 3v3 to goal. The blue team are trying to score in that 3v3. If the red team win the ball, they can pass into the yellows and then the roles switch. Great game for passing range and great game for penalty box, trying to create, trying to score. Different things will stand out for different people. And obviously we've got youth coaches on here listening and hopefully they'll get involved because I want to hear opinions on this here. But for me, that's used to working with senior players. And this is something that this game here, again, I, I'm concerned that everything today is driven by the technical and youth environments. Um, and it's and it's a real deliberate attempt to get everyone technically good at the same skills. When you're then coming out into a seven, a seven, eleven aside, skills like this, passing distance, being able to pick someone up, being able to find a window, a pocket to play forward. I was, oh, this is brilliant. Uh, talk us, talk us through it. Kuman, I picked because I felt he was someone who was under the radar. I think his just how good or great he was has 
past many by. And the thinking was what skills do centre backs really need nowadays? So being able to pass the ball decisively and incisively over long distances is really important. Really important. You see players break defenders breaking lines with their passes. Kuman was brilliant at that but also brilliant at switching the play and playing slightly longer. So that's why I picked him. Here, I, I've talked in one of, in previous books about breaking the 3v3 rules. And I do it quite a lot. Essentially, you can see it's still a 3v3 in that penalty box kind of area. But we've got Kumans, maybe it's his brother Erwin there, playing and their aim is to try and play longer into forwards to try and screen, lay it off, turn and play. But then this game has got a few evolutions because that's quite hard. That's quite hard for a young player to do and could get very scrappy. So there's one version where I play it, pull it forward a bit. So there's a space in behind to try and get the player who's acting as Kuman to chip it almost over the top so we get the players running on. And then I believe there's an adaptation where I allow the player receiving it to carry the ball forward and create a four versus three. And I put that in because I remember uh, a Kuman goal in the very early days of the Champions League where he receives it around the centre circle, drifts forward, drifts forward, drifts forward, no one closes it down, bang, it's in the top corner. That there, even from you, you think three v three isn't well. It's it's all technical. It's not tactical. Well, again, reverse engineering this here. It, it's this this look. This is very tactical. It's two centre backs. Mm. You know, we talk about players today and drifting or or dropping into pockets and that element of timing. But I, I even think Peter that if that that's a difficult ball to play accurately and cleanly. And mm. as coaches, sometimes we gravitate towards very very clean session design and mm -hmm. look for ways that but I'm, if that's a 50 50 ball that also then teaches a player young player to compete to use their body maybe someone to get for seconds like that's all part of the game as well maybe not as clean yeah. but as part of it i th think there's a lot of possible options coming out of it but the main thing is can that central defender play that slightly longer pass forward that's the key thing here or can putting it another way can the central defender be the player who makes the key move in an attacking play franco barese ac milan legend oh what a player franco barese was one of my favorites back in the day sweeper defender who could cover um, allow the other centre back to be a bit more aggressive. So Peter's designed in his book, designed a practice around that there. Here it is. Pitch is divided into five zones. The points are scored by breaching the opposition end zone with either a dribble or a pass. Defenders can't enter that end zone. 2v2 in the centre. Each team has a channel that is patrolled by that Barese type sweeper. Sweeper tries to intercept forward passes and tackle any forward dribbles. Brilliant game. Here was the thinking behind it from Peter's design. Barese, for me, the archetypal sweeper. We talk about Beckenbauer a bit, but Beckenbauer, I think you've got it queued up. Beckenbauer would also play in front of the defence as well as behind the defence. And Barese swept in a back four as well, which I think is, is always very an very interesting thing. and. The sweeper is very much out of fashion, but the game changes. Things that you think are gone come back. I mean, look at the inverted um, fullbacks that Guardiola's using. They're posi those are positions from the 1920s, but there they are. We don't know. There may be a time when sweepers are needed again. So it's a, I thought this was a really good opportunity for a player who is furthest from the ball 
to perhaps be the most influential player or the most important player. And it might encourage players, because not all young players like doing defending, it might encourage them to go, yeah, I'll be that player, because they'll be Baresi. They'll be the most important player. Whether those kids know who Baresi is is another matter. So you might have to teach them or or maybe find someone else who's relevant. But that's the thing. It's the sweeper position. Who's out there playing sweeper at the moment? I can't think of anyone. I do like this here from our angle of like, even as a six game of, you know, I think you could, you could bump this up one and be, you know, someone who's trying to read those break, line breaking passes coming in. I still think as a centre back, it's really, really important. Yeah, I'm. I feel. <clears throat> I'm hoping that by making the game about that defender, that the young players will go. Oh, okay. This is. I can be the defender, and it can be about me. Because how often? I think a lot of the time that that young players don't want to be the defender because they don't get any glory. It's not about them. They don't get the praise. They are the ones who will feel marginalised. But if we make it about that defender, they might fall in love with defending. Next one from Peter's book that jumped out to me was the Franz Beckenbauer game. Franz Beckenbauer, a legend, had 1974 World Cup, had a reputation for bringing the ball and carrying the ball. We see it quite often in the modern game, but back in the 70s and 80s, it wasn't as prevalent. But in this design here, Peter split the pitch into three zones. The goalkeeper serves into one of the team where there's no opposition. Then they carry the ball into zone B where there's a 2v1. Then they progress the ball into the third zone where they're combining and trying to score in a 3v2. The defenders stay and the offensive players can move up one into the final zone to try and score. The transitional element is definitely there. It makes it creative. And there was a few questions I had to Peter about this, about how it makes the picture about progressing your lines with possession of the ball. Love this one. De Kaiser himself. Oh, uh-huh. see, I, like, this is the one legend I've watched. I had a hundred football videos growing up, and and watched them all till all hours long. I haven't seen a lot of Beckenbauer. I got to be honest. Talk to us about about what you know about him, what you see about him, and what you're bringing out in this game. So Beckenbauer's legend is that he's the player or the defender who brings the ball forward, who dribbles through the team. I mentioned about um, PK, and one of PK's nicknames was Pekenbauer. And this is 40 years since Beckenbauer was playing, and they still his name is resonant. This was actually quite hard to design, to try and get what I was looking for from a practice, and it not just be that old FA Level 1 gauntlet game. Where you've got one player and go past him, one player and go past him. I wanted it to be more because he didn't just beat players with dribbling, he also beat them with combinations. Mm. So I constructed it as these increasing zones and of levels of increasing difficulty. Because when you receive the ball, sometimes from the goalkeeper, you could be under no under very little pressure. And that could be your trigger to bring it forward. Then you've got a two versus one. Okay, I could beat the player or I could combine. And then when we get into the final zone, it becomes more difficult because we're close to the goal. We're going to be under the most pressure and we're outnumbered because of the goalkeeper, three versus two. But Beckenbauer did do that. He did get the ball, go forward. He didn't always score the goal. He sometimes created the goal as well. Brilliant, brilliant teaching game to, to communicate that there again. We've all done it. You, you can sit and, and talk about that for 15 minutes to a group of young players. The way, oh, listen, as you go up and, and progress the ball on the pitch, spaces are smaller, defensive numbers are more congested, blah, blah, blah. You're going to have time where the opposition might even press. But what I like about this is, like, obviously, zone A is easy. You're, gonna, you're just going to travel with the ball. 
still still needs to be addressed at some point. But what I love about this is is the fact that it's in a lot of zone games that I've played at older levels, the the defender stays, right? So it's a 2v1, yeah. 2v1, 2v1. And after they play it, so you don't actually get the, the action of progressing with the ball. And, and this one here, because you've got the transitional element of this game, I think it really livens it up because they got to carry it, try to break it down, and there's a level of risk, right? Because there's no one back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because if you lose the ball, you might concede. Mm. But if you take the risk and go forward, you might score. Mm. And we see it quite often. It's often the same video we see actually popping up on, on Twitter and social media about young defenders being encouraged to bring the ball forward. I'm not sure how much that actually really happens. I still think that people are very conservative about it. But if they're not allowed to practice bringing the ball forward at training sessions, why why would we expect them to do it suddenly in a game? Yeah, they might play a lot of 1v1 and be comfortable on the ball and, and play like that, but that's different to the changing picture that you get as you progress forward with the ball in the match. Last but not least, Kevin De Bruyne, current legend, definitely going to be a future legend with the way he's playing on the world stage these days. We all know Kevin De Bruyne's passing ability. But there's a type of cross that Kevin De Bruyne specialises in. And Peter's managed to bring it out in this little 3v3 game. I thought this was fantastic. He's marked out the channels as the half spaces in the yellow. The attacking team are attacking in a 3v3 or a 3v2 if you put a goalkeeper in. And they've got five attacks each. And a goal is worth one point, a regular goal. But if they score from the half space, it's worth three points. If the opponents win the ball, score the mini goals, one point. Here is what Peter was thinking in his design of the exercise. The De Bruyne game, and I never, and it's again like it's the visual. Everyone looking at this is gonna like if you had one player to say, all right, that player gets an extra. What is it, a three point if it's from an assist in this area? Yeah, that just screams. That's a De Bruyne pass, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I always, it's um, constrained to afford. So. I would say, rather than say, you can only score if he plays the pass. I would say, no, no, no. Let's let that player who starts with the ball, if he can travel forward and go and score, great. But if we play it wide, we can reward that player who's putting that De Bruyne-style ball in from the half space to try and create opportunities. And De Bruyne was picked because... Modern great, modern legend, a player who is often held up. You know, with his, people see his assists all the time. Yeah, there's compilation videos of, all, of them all over the place. So, a young player who's interested in football, if I said to them, "You know how De Bruyne creates goals," they'll probably go, "Yeah, I got it. I do. Right? Can you try and do that?" That's all the explanation that's needed. So there you have it, coaches. Just a little insight and a little look at the book, 3v3, Inspired by Legends. Highly recommend that you get a copy of it. It's on the link below. If you want to listen to the full interview that we had with Peter, we had him on for an hour, and we talked about philosophy and thinking and session design and ways to manage the environment around these exercises. Highly recommend you give that a listen too. It's on the link below. It will be on the podcast release this week. Loved having Peter on. Love coaches that are looking at different ways to communicate important things. Things that when we look at the game, do they go out of fashion? Do they not go out of fashion? The game's always changing. It's always growing. But there's certain things about the game that I think will always be there. And I think when we as coaches, when we look back at our memories of the game and how we grew to love the game and we grew to enjoy the game, you know, it was about those individuals and if those exercises inspire not just the players that were coaching but also us to think a little bit differently i think it's a really really good thing so that's what the exercises did to me in the book 
it got me to think they got me to think a little bit more about session design and and how to maybe spark a little bit more into an exercise like the De Bruyne one and how to make it a bit more specific for a certain position so you can look at it from a player development standpoint as well there's a lot of things but definitely go ahead and check out the book again on the link below please don't forget before you leave to subscribe to the channel give this a like I uh, really appreciate your help in helping the channel grow we're almost at 20,000 really appreciate all your help in this lots more content coming modernsoccercoach.com every week two more articles please check them out thanks so much for the support i will see you next week goodbye